Welcome to the Ask Palestini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Lucy Wood from the UK. Lucy started her career in tech world over 10 years ago, working for large corporations, startups, and high growth phase companies, all within sales and consulting. Lucy only sells what she believes can make a real difference, which is why she has inspired customers all over the world. Lucy has always been the one who loves to talk, as well as understands the importance of listening and holding space. So she quickly learned that one of her superpowers is building connections with clients, reading their patterns and behaviors, and empowering them to make better decisions for themselves and their organizations. She made the challenging decision to leave LinkedIn back in September to recharge her batteries after working continuously through the pandemic. She's now ready for the next adventure. Lucy, please tell us more about yourself. What is your story? Oh, thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. It's just so lovely to hear someone read someone else's bio. You kind of feel a bit like, ooh, okay. Um, well, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, wow, okay. So where am I now? Where's the next adventure? So yeah, I left LinkedIn in September last year. I was working in Australia at the time. So my accent probably might sound a bit Australian as well as UK. There's a bit of a twang there. Uh, took some months off, like probably a lot of people working nonstop during the pandemic. I'd also moved to Australia just before the pandemic happened. So it was a lot of different kind of moving parts. Um, and I had been podcasting for five years on and off. Um, for me, I had had disordered eating from the age of eight till 30. And um, like with any kind of eating patterns or behaviors, there's tool there's tools in your toolbox, right? You're not like, whoa, suddenly healed one day. Um, but I thought to myself, what is it that I really, really, really love doing now? We've got out of the pandemic, I'm taking some time out, and it came back to body and voice, which are the two things that I felt I had disempowered myself for so long in and that I was like like you say in the bio my sales stuff I only sell what I believe in which technically is what everyone does in their business so um, I ended up traveling to LA um, invested in learning actually how to professionally podcast and actually how to put my big girl pants on as one would say and actually you know see this as a career and how I can help other people um so Went to Bali as well, found myself a bit of an eat, pray, love time for, for me um, and really came back to creating a business first off, which was originally around teaching people how to sell through LinkedIn. So how to obviously use the skills that I learned at LinkedIn to empower their own businesses. And it just didn't feel aligned to me. It didn't feel aligned to, to my values and to where I was anymore. So I took a step back and was like what's actually helped me get over the way I've been mentally with my relation my body and my food and my own self for such a long time and it was simple things like breath work my intuition you know the decisions I had made for so many years I was still fixing as one can say still am doing that now because I think when you come out of from my experience when you come out of a mental illness like that your whole world isn't how you want it to be. You've been in like a starved mindset of everything. So I um, study breath work. It's still ongoing right now. It'll always be an ongoing thing for me. But for me, my important thing is to teach people how to get back into their body and find their intuition. And that can be business, that's relationships, that's what you're doing tomorrow, overwhelm, anxiety, anything, because it's all stored within us. And we have been taught for most of our lives to outsource our intuition to other people. So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> okay. I have a question regarding intuition. Okay. Uh, one of my uh, professor from um, LA uh, uh, once told me that... Uh, the most vital tool in any business uh, is uh, the intuition of the general manager. Would you agree with that? No. <laughs> okay. Please explain. <laughs> because everyone has their own intuition. So 
if you say one, everyone's outsourcing to the general manager, of course, the general manager needs to have a very tapped in intuition with where the business is heading to. But everyone in the business has to have an intuition aligned to the GM's vision for things to work. So I think it's a whole, it's a whole combination of an organization. Yeah. But, but, uh, would you agree that intuition is really important for business? Yes. Uh, or the knowledge is more important. How would you put knowledge and intuition? I would say intuition is knowledge. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because <clears throat> you know everything, you know the answers. And I know a lot of people, and even myself is sometimes like, come on, like, come on. And I don't mean you know, you're not a fortune teller, but you intuitively know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You intuitively know it's simple things, what you want to eat, who you want to date, what you want to do tonight. You know all those things because your body tells you all the time. So your intuition is your knowledge. But also there is things like books sat behind you. Of course, they're amazing pieces of knowledge. But your intuition guides you to what book you want to read. Okay. Uh, would you agree that in order to access your intuition or use it properly, uh, you you need to be in a certain, um, let's say, phase or stage or however you want to call it. Uh, you need to be relaxed enough uh, because the more you're under pressure, the more you're burned out, uh, the less uh, you, you, you listen to your intuition. I love that you've brought this up. So I recently on my podcast had a conversation about burnout. And the reason why we typically burn out is because we're so far away from our intuition, because we're thinking through our mind. Now, 80% of the trauma is stored in your body and 20% is stored in your mind. So a mindset coach, they're amazing. I've invested in many of them in my time, still have them in my life. But if it is stored in the body, you're not going to fully get to the root of why you're continuously wanting to overwork. You're unfulfilling yourself, which is the result of burnout. So if you tap in to the body, you're in a relaxed state in your intuition you don't need to be burnt out because you're doing what you're meant to be doing one step at a time. Yeah. Okay. Or in, in order to release these traumas from, from the body, what, what would be the method that you would recommend? Well, there's a lot of different methods. So uh, hence I say, I'm always work in progress on learning, but for me, if someone hasn't started, for example, I would say, and they're at their desk and they're at work and they feel they're getting quite stressed and quite tense. Four breaths in, four breaths out. A very simple technique for two to five minutes. And you have to have a conscious conscious um, focus on your breath in and out. And you have to breathe from your stomach out through your nose. If you're breathing from your chest, I can tell if someone has anxiety from the way they breathe. I don't know if you can hear this, but... If you breathe from your chest, you're anxious because you're clinging on to something. You're not letting go. You're in fear. You're in fight or flight. And a lot of people live their lives, myself included, before where you live in fight or flight, you don't know any different. And that's a trauma response. And it doesn't need to be something horrific in your life. It could just be the environment that you've been brought up. Everyone else has been living like that. So that's a simple technique. Um, the one that I really love is the blow breath. And that is just through your mouth and out through your, in, in through your mouth, out through your mouth. And you can do that for three minutes. You can easily do that while you're washing up, while you're shopping in the supermarket. Like it's not something you necessarily need to stop, meditate and sit still you can do this while you're doing other things maybe not in like a, a conference call with all your teammates unless you want them to do it too but yeah that's the power of breath so those are the two ones i recommend you, you try first okay uh for me it was really helpful to release uh, bodily stress or or stress that was in my body uh to, to do uh cold water immersions uh the Wim Hof style uh what, what's your take on it I love it. I think I think it's an amazing way to burn excess fat, release any stress or anxiety, and for you to learn how to be uncomfortable, how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation, because life throws us these uncomfortable situations the whole time, no matter where you're living, what you're doing. And I think all of us have realized that particularly over the last two years, we're not in control of really very much. And if you can build that resilience through breath, through being in an uncomfortable situation, your resilience in your mind 
it's so strong and so powerful yeah so yeah i'm glad to hear you're doing that how how, how important is uh the the food for you i'm i'm a, a large um um grass fed and uh, um free range animal advocate or at least free range animal meat advocate how, how important is, is is the food for you what would you recommend and uh, what would you do if you would be on the budget how would you take care of your food oh on a budget um wow <laughs> that's something see for me a food is a bit of a non-negotiable when it comes to um how i nourish my body particularly because i have mal had malnourished it for such a long period of time I would say something though for people that are on a budget is therapeutic as well as cooking for yourself. Something very simple, but I always don't compromise on organics and things like that. If it means you have to wait, say like 8, 8 p.m. at night for like the things that are going to go off that night, do it because something like organic is very nourishing and very good for, for you. If obviously that's not within your budget, simple things, I'm the same as you, meat, veg, Carbs, I think carbs still get a bad rap. I'm a big believer in carbs. And I think everybody is different. I try not to give diet advice because I'm aware of people's own things that they have with food. But what's helped me is I have learned to listen to my body and what my body wants, but my body doesn't want a cake every day. You know, you know, some people be like, well, that means you're going to chocolate bar five times a day. And it's like, yes, that's the that's how it starts off but actually I start to come in tune with my body and be like I feel like I need a steak today because maybe my, my iron level is becoming low or I actually got my bloods tested and I'm O positive and then I studied the diet that was good for my mm. body yeah and ironically it was already what I was eating so same as you big meat eater, meat eater um I did try vegan like the most of the world and I found I lost a lot of hair um and then I was just craving chicken and meat and I, I, it works well for my body. So I think if people do want some guidance, definitely look at your blood type, just go to the doctors, your GP, you might have to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Um, but yeah, I'm a big believer in the Mediterranean diet, red wine, love a red wine, you know, once, twice a week and some meat and veg, simple but delicious. <laughs> okay. What, what do you think about uh, DNA test for, for the diet? because they tell you what uh, you might be allergic to or what you're, what you're prone to be allergic to. Uh, what, what What's your take on that? Because it's, it's, now it's really popular to do a DNA test and uh, search for your ancestry and also for, for they tell you what, uh, what your food should be or what you are prone to be allergic to. Yeah, you know, I have a mixed opinions on this because I've done, I've done a few and I, I did one while I was very had disordered eating quite bad time for me and it came up with all these different things and it said I was allergic to and it was things like pumpkin which I loved and I took a step back and was like my body actually does does enjoy pumpkin so I think there's an extremes here I think if it's used in the right way obviously if you know your family are all traditionally allergic to nuts of course you know that's definitely the right way DNA it doesn't really fascinate me, but I know it fascinates other people. I think don't become obsessed with whatever you do. That's the main thing. If it's a life or death and it's like hereditary, of course, but otherwise, no, it's not. I, I think it's just another excuse to become obsessed with something else personally. <laughs> okay. So uh, how, how much would you attribute uh, for uh, health? How much would you attribute to a diet and how much to exercise? Ah, so I'm a big mover. I, I That's just who I am. That's how I'm built. I love moving and I love talking. <laughs> My two favorite things. So um, I know the statistics from a, from a research perspective that it's something, it's like 60% diet, 40% exercise. Mm -hmm. But for me, I genuinely think it's how you're feeling. I think I, I, I actually really enjoy healthy food, but I think it's an 80-20, eat what you, 80% eat healthy, 20% have things that aren't so good for you but movement doesn't mean to be you're at the gym 5 a.m every day like you could go for a walk you could go um do some yoga like I think some people get quite fixated and they have to do their routines and they have to be very disciplined every day and particularly as a woman when a woman has a 30-day cycle that doesn't work for a woman's body so I think it's really listening to who you are and what works for you and the stress levels you've got that day you know I find 
if I'm weightlifting, you put your body under a lot of stress anyway. Um, and if I have a stressful day as an entrepreneur, then that night I am so sore. And it's because I put my body under extra stress that it didn't need to be on through training. So I often really measure my stress and obviously try and obviously reduce it down a lot through breath and things like that. But if I'm having a particularly full on day, I won't weight train. Um, but if I'm having a day where I have a lot of stagnant energy, I'll go full guns to the gym and just burn it off and have a great time. So I think that's important to keep your stress levels into consideration with how you're training. Okay. I want to know your take on swimming as a part of the exercise routine. Oh, oh my God. I love the ocean. I miss the ocean so much right now. I have a bath every night. Um, I, I, I think swimming is a great, great way of exercise. I think we are very privileged if we know how to swim. I've actually, I realized quite a few cultures where they're not actually taught how to swim. So I think swimming is very meditative. It's very good for your breathing, of course, mm -hmm. and you have to be present. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a great form of exercise for mental, physical, spiritual. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on sauna? So uh, uh, hmm. sweating it out, as they say. What? 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 What would you? Uh, how would you uh, like include that in a in a uh, health routine? Oh my gosh, I miss the sauna so much right now. So when I was in Bali and Australia, I would sauna every day, and it helps a lot with. Um, if you're going through a challenging time, it helps release a lot from the body. So if you've done, say, um, an intense breathwork session, or you've done a cold, a cold, you know, bath, shower, ice bath, mm -hmm. a sauna is a great way because it replenishes the um, the cells, but it also allows you to sweat out any uh, detox or get rid of anything that you've done. So I think a sauna, if I could sauna three, four times a week, I would sauna, yeah a lot <laughs> but also i think you have to be quite aware of how much you're in saunas with how hot it is outside because you're so dehydrated you always have to have coconut oil in your water or coconut water to keep yourself hydrated because you can really pass out <laughs> uh, what's your take on different uh, detox weekends and different detox week uh, while i was in switzerland that was one of the most popular uh, weekend uh, i'll say uh, uh, health routine Uh, liver detox mm. <laughs> i've gone through phases of detoxing i've gone through phases of like liquid only diets um and for me that was quite easy because as a child i used to just prefer liquids personally i went through a lot of gut issues um i actually caught parasites when i was in bali and one of the reasons why my stomach had become the way it was is because i had relied so heavily on liquids for a period of time that my digestion wasn't working so it's very slow so i don't really believe liquids are the way forward i think a detox has to be done with the right way it has to be done with someone that has a, a strong mental mindset that can switch on and off They don't become obsessed with it and keep using it as like their binge and then their purge, as it were. Um, but I think it, it can be done well in moderation with the right intentions. So say you've had, you know, a big Christmas, you know, in January, everyone has all these juice cleanses. Like if that helps get you back on track with your fruit and vegetables and meats, fine. And then you continue that, that's great, but it, it can't be sustainable. It's not sustainable. We're meant to digest our food. There you go. <laughs> so uh, you would agree with, uh, let's say, one-time detox, but not uh, continuous detox. Yeah, correct. It's a detox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So um, tell us about your next venture. Where do you plan to, to, to take your uh, journey? Yeah, so um, very much sort of like in an interim period at the moment of, of building, which I know you know what this is like. So where I'm heading to next is I am, well, I'm already in the way, teaching specifically women. I do want to help men as well, of course, be more in tune with their bodies through their intuition. So things like imposter syndrome, things like um, feeling like you're not enough, financial situations, building a business, all these key things, teaching them how to 
go through the breath, remove any of those blocks and create what they actually want to make. And I know it sounds a bit woo woo, but like I said before, all your traumas and what's holding you back is stored in your body. So currently setting that up, working through that um, and building that. And I'm very excited to to move forward and, and help people, you know, in their businesses and in their lives really realize their capacity because it all comes from the breath. Um, I also have a successful podcast and YouTube channel called Working Under Pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, which actually hit, went viral last weekend. So I'm very excited to, to kind of watch where that happens. But that's all about teaching people to actually enjoy more of what they have in life. And we talk about love, sex and relationships and it all comes back down to the body and knowing if you're in the right place with the right person and and how to get better at these things or how to just enjoy what you have right now. <laughs> so yeah, okay. yeah. I see you are um, really a fountain of knowledge and you've tested all this stuff and all this um, but I'm interesting, interested in, in, in one more uh, thing. So uh, when you explain your next venture, do you see yourself as doing it? Or uh, would you like to develop a platform where multiple coaches would be available to, to your clients? Yes, of course. It's crazily, I keep getting app developers and, and people are already reaching out. So I think that's going to ha- happen pretty soon um, from an investor standpoint. But yes, I see this as something as a go-to, you know, like even the tips I've just mentioned now when you're washing up or when you're at your work, like you have something available to you. But I also really want this to become a community because I think we are so disconnected from the world, from ourselves from colleagues, from friends, from family, because of what's happened. And we have to be connected with our bodies and we have to be connected with other people. So that's where I see it heading to. Ask me in a few weeks and there'll be an even bigger vision. But yeah, that's definitely the plan for sure. But I really want to help corporates. I think they need a lot of help and guidance into growing and and managing day-to-day life. Okay. I I, I will, um, I'm just dying to ask you this. Uh, would you be able to share uh, one thing that like in your health or your client's health uh, that was paramount for their business development? Because you're also talking about helping a woman develop their business. So, um, for example, uh, you, you talked about the imposter uh, syndrome, if I'm correct. Yeah. How does imposter syndrome directly correlate with their business life? Great question. Oh, love this. Are you asking the best questions? Um, money. So I love this. So as typically as women, myself included, we there's this shame around body image, money, and relationships. It goes hand in hand. And there's a lot of trauma stored in the body for typically women when it comes to asking for more money for their work, for their businesses, for their services, even asking for money in general, right? So, and obviously the, word, the way the world has flipped, women only recently for the last 40, 50 years have been able to earn their own, own income, their own salary, and have their own independence. And now we've got obviously this amazing online boom but there's still all the trauma trapped traditionally in women's bodies hereditary conditioning past lives if you want to believe in that um where women don't we don't know how to step up into that part so it's been amazing to watch women recalibrate the traumas in their body release the pains can be your heart your foot typically your hips those kind of areas of yourself and the confidence, it's not nice at the time, I will be honest, <laughs> but the confidence that you release and the person that you become is insane. And your bank balance starts to grow. So, yeah. So uh, if you heal or if someone heals imposter syndrome, it should um, directly correlate with their bank account. Is that correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. If you have your own business, for sure. Or actually, if you work for someone else because you ask for pay rises, you you become more confident, right? But your mm-hmm. imposter syndrome is all about self-worth, not feeling worthy for where you're at or what you're doing, feeling like, I want to think of a different word for imposter, you know, feeling like you're playing or you're acting. If you step into your worth, you realize that actually you're probably worth more than what you're going through already at the time. And then you'll have that ripple effect where, it doesn't necessarily need to be money if you desire more time off, if you desire to finish early on a Friday. What you are worthy of and you believe you're worthy of will change. And that is the biggest thing, I think, to see and to help. Yeah. Uh, before we start recording, uh, we, we mentioned the law of attraction. Uh, do you believe in law of attraction? Are you a law of attraction practitioner? Uh, hmm. Do I believe in the law of attraction? 
this is a funny one because it's they talk about how it's all in the mind right and i've been hooked on this abraham hicks i think she's a fast i think it's fascinating the whole thing but i do believe there is a connection between your mind and your body and i think you can listen to all these amazing oh 700 million pounds is going to come into my bank account tomorrow but you have to be taking the right action but you also have to feel safe in your body to receive it right that's the difference and i think that's where law of attraction needs to we need to be aware of that part so there's the law of action which i believe in so i believe in the law of attraction partnered with the law of action and i think that is when you receive what you desire so uh, apart from uh, likes attract uh, attracts like uh, we need to have healthy mind and healthy body yes and uh, we need we need to set our mind and our body to the frequency of abundance in order to receive something would would you agree with that yes but i think we have to feel safe to receive that you know like mm -hmm. you can write down that you want to make this much money but how does your body actually feel like i've done this this is where i've had goals for many years and been like why have they not been why have they not been achieved because my body hasn't felt safe to receive that Mm -hmm. and that's where the work comes from when it comes to breath work and somatic body work so um i i, I will may, maybe i will oversimplify it but uh, there's a lot of um um content on the internet that discusses how you need to set your mind uh, but in order to achieve it you also need to set your body is that correct correct yeah because you, you see people and they have invested all this money in personal growth and personal development courses and myself included and yet they're they're, they're believing what someone is saying but by three o'clock in the afternoon they've got the same trauma same triggers same patterns same loops same behaviors because mm -hmm. it's the 20 percent up here versus the 80 percent. so it needs to be combined together to work so if i um how to say if I understood correctly, uh, you help people uh, in, in your coaching business and consulting and all, all the programs that you're preparing, you, you help people focus on 8% of the body uh, that will help them um, synchronize with their mind in order to achieve what they're looking. Correct. Okay, great. Well, well said, thank you. <laughs> so, so that is your unique point of sale. Uh, <laughs> or might be um so is there anything else uh you would like our listeners to take from this interview uh any quick tips or uh any trade secrets that you can share with us uh, any anything i can share i think if you a lot of people don't like this. <laughs> um, if you take some time out each day where you sit on your own in a bit of silence, can be a minute or two. If you have children, family, you know, that can be quite a lot. But if you take a minute or two to sit with yourself and to see how you feel, the aches and pains that are in your body and you breathe through them and you see what comes up, that is an amazing starting point for releasing the trauma that you've got trapped in your body and everyone has it like i said it doesn't need to be something horrific in your childhood everyone has these things these conditionings these patterns where they are believed to be something that they're not so try that see how that happens and what other tips would i say get out more in nature we were saying this earlier right a lot of people are so disconnected get outside get walking get talking get being back with people because this is a lonely place right now. And that's why things like podcasting is doing so well because people are craving depth in connection and conversation. So listen to this podcast, listen to my podcast and get talking to your friends. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. I will put uh, all the links where uh, you can reach Lucy and uh, where you can reach her podcast uh, in the description below. And uh, thank you, Lucy, uh, for being my guest tonight. Oh, pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks guys for listening.